Hey yo, welcome back guys. This video we're going to be talking about returning custom objects. So we have these search methods and all they do is return the index where a particular user is found. What if we wanted to return the actual user object? Well that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. Pramp is a free mock interview platform where you can develop your technical interviewing skills. Practice coding with live execution of all major programming languages to solve real interview questions. Interview types include data structures and algorithms, product management, behavioral interviews, system design, front end, and data science. I've personally used this service to successfully crash course for a software engineering interview. Lots of people are having success getting positions at companies like Amazon, Google, Twitter, and more. Check it out, I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. So we'll say public and it's gonna be static, and the return type is going to be user. Now, here's an issue. If you wanted to call it the same thing, search list, and have users and you as the parameters, that's not gonna work, because the return type is not enough to make a valid overload. So we actually need to name it something different, or we need to change the parameter list. So what I'll do is I'll just say, find user, so we're gonna find that user and return it. And this is still going to take a list of type user, call that users and we'll take a user uh, called you and we're going to use a for each loop so for each user user coming from the users list what we're going to do is we're just going to do a comparison we'll say user dot equals pass in you the parameter value here and if this is true all we got to do is return user very simple if we get through the whole loop and no one is true then what we need to do is we just need to return null. And on the calling side, you can check for null to see if that value is found. All right, let's give it a try, see if it works. Let's go to our calling code. And in here, we're gonna get rid of this line here. We're not going to use that old search list. We're gonna use the new one. So we'll say user dot find user, pass in our list of users and the, the user we're looking for. Let's say we're looking for you. We could see if that's found. Now, it may be the situation where you don't have access to that object directly, like so. So what you might do instead is you might create a representation of what that object would look like. So let's do that. We'll create a user search and say new user. And what are we searching for? Well, the first name should be not. And the last name should be me. Cool. So now we might actually search using that object we just generated. And because this method returns a user, we can assign that directly to a user object that we just create like so. And what we can do now is with this new user object, we can just output it by passing it into the print line. Running this, you can see we get the full name, not me. So it's not null because if it was null, let's just say, mix this up a little bit by changing that name. And ran this, you can see we get null, so it's not found. So it seems that it's found and it actually returns that object. Now the key thing to note here is that it is the same object, it's not a copy. So the memory address is actually passed around as a value and we can change the fields. So if we did found dot set first name and changed it to Sally, well check this out. If we go and print you up here, remember, running this, you can see your name is now changed to Sally. And the reason that is, is because we're searching for this. It's found, it returns you, and now found is the same object as you. So I'll see you guys in the next video where we're gonna talk a little bit about this in a little bit more detail. So see you guys then.